You realize you have it off. I can't turn it off and on because I know that okay. green dot needs to show. What can you play? So it wasn't working last night either. So that's yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll, right. we'll just. Okay. I'll come it, up. it didn't work even when I brought it back. Okay. <laughs> All right, so okay, well, I see we have thing. someone online. Who do we have? Faye. Hi, Faye. Oh God, oh Hello, Faye Smith. Hello. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Oh, tell her to raise, her hand. raise your hand and let me see if I can show the screen because she's people she can't see her screen. Unmuted. No, I got her unmuted. I unmuted her. Well, Faye, we see you on here. Cheryl, I see you just joined. Glad you're on. Hey, how are you? Hey, is that um, you? isn't that um, Miss Marshall? Yeah. Hey, good to see you. Come on in. So, ladies, we're getting ready to start now. I will put you all back on mute. Hey, Mr. Jason. Okay, I'm putting you all on mute, and uh, hopefully you all can see the screen. You all can raise your hand if you uh, have any questions or so forth. But uh, I'm going to introduce our speaker, and we're going to get started. Okay, yes, yeah, on solid. And I don't need to speak into that. I can just, just talk. Yeah, it's, it's, it should work the room. But it, ladies, could Cheryl, Cheryl, I know you're online. Could you put a note in there to let me know if you can hear? I'm way across the room. I want to make sure you can hear me. Just put a note in the uh, <laughs> chat. Funny. I was trying to find your office. Let me know if you can see us. I mean, hear us. <laughs> Faye or Cheryl. Okay, I see you heard me because you put something in there. Raise your hand. Let me go back and close that out. Yeah. Chat. Oh, where's the question, chat? Come on. Show it to me. Loud and clear. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. All righty. Let's get you going here. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Good afternoon. You see, my days are rolling. How they're going? So good morning, everyone online. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. Yeah. It's afternoon somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. All right. We. You know, the interesting thing is, we just came from having a great event last night. So maybe I'm still realming in the the ecstasy of last night into this morning. So. Before we get started with today's presentation, I have a few announcements to make, and this is to make sure everyone is aware of what's coming up here at GCA. We are moving into the season of the heavy hitters and big spenders. And I get excited about this because our famous president, Ms. Myra Cisse, this is her brainchild, her birth child. And I want every one of you all to understand how important it is for your business to be seen by these uh, heavy hitters that are coming in. So right now we already have confirmed the guest speaker is going to be Craig Carnes from the Housing and Urban Development. So if you're in anything with real estate, and if you, real estate runs the world. Yeah. So you need to be in front of HUD, whether it's a consulting service, IT, whatever you do, HUD needs to know that you exist. Okay, so HUD will be there. We have Veteran Affairs confirmed. We already have General Services confirmed, General Services Administration. And we are looking at Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA coming as well. So you talk about heavy hitters, big spenders, they will be here. You want everyone to know you're there as well. And so to let people know that you're there, we're having the capability pitch contest. And uh, Myra, would you talk a little bit about that? Because yeah. Myra, yeah. this is her brainchild. I want her to explain how this competition, this contest works. Yeah. Can, they hear me? Can, can you all hear Myra from the back? No, I'll just tell yes, yes, okay, yes, so, yes. But the capability pitch contest, this is something, I mean, we were kind of talking around this last year and then it just the whole download came and I was like oh my gosh what are we doing Americans I don't like competition with the businesses so during the heavy hitters and big spenders event we have the opportunity for the top three winners in the capability pitch contest to present their business so you're at the room in front of HUD and CDC and uh, VA and GSA and you know if FEMA and Army Corps of Engineers or when they confirm you have your opportunity to pitch your business there. The way it is, is we open up the field, we can have up to 48 contestants, and then we have preliminary rounds, and we narrow those 48 down to 10. And then from those top 10, we pick a final three. Those three have the opportunity at the event to pitch their business. So it's an amazing opportunity. Um, our winner last year presented about how effective it was for her business. As a result, she's gotten a lot more work from the people that were in the room, including the CDC, and I can't remember who the other one is that she's working with now. City um, of Atlanta? Okay. Probably. Um, so it, it's it's just an amazing opportunity, and don't miss it. So we will train you on how to prepare a proper pitch, so we're not just going to throw you to the wolves and say, have at it. 
So we're going to give you um, several weeks of training. We're going to let you practice your pitch, and then we go to the preliminary to the um, elimination rounds, so that you can, you know, hopefully get into the top ten and then be one of those final three. So everyone here, please sign up for the competition so you can, even if you think you're not ready yet. <laughs> I, I saw it on your face, like no, I'm not, no, no. You, at some point, you gotta you gotta step out and and put yourself out there. So um, it's a great learning experience, especially if you're not ready to to get acclimated to how you talk to these contracting officers and folks about your business. So yes, please join. And um, so the 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 whole series of training classes begin July 10th. So if you're interested, we have a special going now. You want to go ahead and get signed up now for that special rate to be in the competition and also so that you can uh, reserve your space early to get in and get some get a good spot. We only are taking a certain number of people uh, for this competition because we are got we have esteemed judges coming in to do the, the judging to make sure that you all are prepared. And like the winner said last night, who spoke, she explained that she is a public speaker, but she learned a lot from just going through this competition. Uh, so if she, who is an experienced speaker, learned from this, we all should be a part of this as well. So we want to make sure that our members that are a part of GCA, you all take advantage of this. Because last year we had more people from around the country flying into this opportunity than our own people right here. So I don't want you all to miss out on that. The announcement is out. If you're ready to sign up, we'll take you on. So the training starts July 10th and it goes on until uh, the actual day of the competition was August 22nd. Now, all that to say, now we'll turn over to today's presentation. Our guest speaker is Ms. Amy Reese. Amy Reese has, I forgot how many years of experience in corporate, but it's been several years of doing corporate uh, marital work. And she's now taken all those skill sets into her own business, which is Art Business Solutions. ARC. ARC, right, okay. <laughs> I got that right. She is here to present part two of the training of sales skills that things that we need to know when we're selling our business to uh, not just government, but also supplier diversity and commercial in, in, in general. So we are glad to have her here today. Ms. Amy, if you'll come forward and educate us today. I'm going to do that. Good morning, right. everybody. Good morning. So happy to be here again. How, how many, um, I think everybody's, were you here last time? Who was here um, last Wednesday? Got all new people in I thought so. Yeah, all wow, everybody's brand new. Okay, so, um, well, no problem, because I'm going to go through just a little bit of a recap, because part of what I did last week was um, talk about the preparation steps. So um, we're going to go on and get started, and I'll go through and let you guys know what is. It's the most long. Is it? Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. You said enter or? raising their hand here. Let's see if that will work. Oh, go. go back, go back. That's the, is that the next page or is one more? One more before. Previous. Back. Previous thing. Okay. So that's okay. 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 I was, I was trying to make it so this is in the middle, but the extension cord doesn't have the Three so. so today, what I'm gonna, I, I'll share with you, just give you a little bit of brief overview about me and what qualifies me to be here to, to teach you today. Um, and then of course, I'm gonna go through um, preparing for actually making the connection. There's a big piece when we talk about making connections with decision makers and really getting in front of them. There's a, there's a method to the madness that's really, really important that you need to understand. So preparation is a big part of that. Um, we're going to cover that. That's going to include breaking down what a SWOT analysis is. If you don't know what one is, I'm going to give you examples. Researching the organization. We're going to talk about go deeper into earnings calls. Um, and then, of course, the anatomy of a very first meeting. How do you conduct your very first meeting? So now you've got the opportunity to sit in front of someone who makes decisions. What do you say to them? What kind of questions do you ask? Um, of course, asking the right questions and then also very, very important is securing next steps. You really have to know how to do that. So um, we're going to cover all of that. And so just to give you a little idea about um, who I am, I um, spent 23 years in corporate development. I was in high level. Basically, corporate development is high level sales. 
So I worked for a major Fortune 500 company, and I was um, I was director VP level for many many years, and um, was responsible literally for um, creating strategic partnerships between the company that I represented and worked for and other major Fortune 500 companies. Like literally millions of dollars is I was responsible for these strategic partnerships. That that's the revenue. So just the last two years before I left corporate America, of course I've been gone now for about four years. I brought in over my partnerships brought in over nine million dollars. Um, and so some of my past clients and I still have great relationships with a lot of these organizations, of course, Delta Airlines, City of Roswell, Carnival Cruise Line. I mean, these are some, just some, uh, Coca-Cola, some of the brand names, but um, probably just about every major um, corporation, especially if it's headquartered or have major presence in the Southeast, I was involved in those strategic relationships. Okay, so now we're going to get started. I hope you guys have your pen and paper and ready because we're about to dig in because you really need to understand what happens like how do, what do you need to do you have your sights set on doing business with a company or an agency right um how many of you guys have a list of uh dream companies that you want to do business with i know my i know my <laughs> who else how many of y'all have a you guys have not hold on pause you guys have not thought about what organizations you want to go after? I thought about it. <laughs> yeah. But you have you thought about it, but does it feel out of reach to you? Does it feel like I can't, like I don't know what, what do I do? Or do you feel like feel too I would, small. Too, you feel too, too, too small. small? It's like, why would they even talk to me? That's really you know? good. Thank you for your honesty. You know? Right. That's you know, it's like it's okay, hunting and ingles, shipbuilding. I know mm -hmm. people that are, you know, painters and sandblasters and everything that want to get in there through me, mm -hmm. but for the last seven months, I haven't even been able to get a, a, a an email or response from the contracting officer. You've been trying? Yeah. Because it's probably not a contracting officer. Well, it's I'm somebody, I mean, no, but it's probably somebody <laughs> that, I mean, at least somebody that could at least introduce me, you know. Right. Probably, you know You've been trying to get your foot in there. I've been trying to say, hey, you know, what's next? You know, yeah. I registered uh, about a year ago in, in the company. They know they know me as a potential supplier. Yeah. But yeah, you're in a you're in a sheet of paper mm -hmm. with a thousand with five hundred other people. people right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. So you know, it's like I have an email of somebody, but do I want is see the right person? Yeah. So how so the question is then how do you differentiate yourself from everybody else, all the other small businesses, right? Because that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna tell you something. Even when I worked in corporate America, when I and I worked for a major Fortune 500 company, publicly traded, it could we, we same thing. I mean, these people get bombarded all the time by people who want to do business with them, right? I mean, the company that I represented, people would connect with me just because they knew I worked for this company and and they want in, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I would get bombarded just like uh, the people that I was trying to connect with at Delta or at Carnival Cruise or whoever, same thing. They get bombarded with, with other companies, salespeople, corporate development people, account executives, you name it. Everybody's pushing something, right? <laughs> yeah. HR, learning, you name it, products, they're always. So um, the key is, and, and here's one thing that I really need you to understand is you have got to do your research to really understand that company that you're going after. You have to learn how to speak their language. Yeah. You need to know what's important to that company. If you approach them the way everybody else does, and even when I was in corporate America and there were other, our competitors who were also other major corporations, right? Um, you know, they would just bombard them. Here's what we can do for you. Here's what we can do for you. It's all about them, 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 right? A turnoff, and they were representing a major corporation, right? Who was who was pushing some product or service? It's a turnoff, and so one of the things that I think is really really important to understand is you we got to learn how to communicate better. The, they're just people. I, listen, I've sat at the table with C-suite, which are like all your C-level people: CEO, CEO, CSO, T, CTO, CIO, all of them. At, sit at the table with them. I've also sat at the table with VPs and directors. They're just people. They ask questions just like you do. They don't want to be sold, like no more than somebody ringing your doorbell trying to sell you something, right? You don't want to be sold. You want to you want to know that the, that who you're communicating with 
is interested, genuinely interested in, in your goals and you, right? And so if you come at them from a direction of just what you can do for them without really getting to know them, without really asking questions, without really doing your research on that company, you're going to look like everybody else. And you will be a name on that sheet of paper, on that spreadsheet that you talked about. And so um, the, the really important thing that I think that small business owners need to understand is that um, many feel the way you feel. And that was an honest, what you said was very honest. Everybody probably feels that way. And, and a lot of major corporations, if, if you are a corporate development person working for, I don't care if you're working for Coca-Cola and you're trying to get into Aramark or whatever, you can feel like that too if you're unprepared or if you don't know how to get in there and how to really speak their language. So the first thing that you need to do, how many of you know what a SWOT analysis is? You've all heard of that? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Basically that is you assessing that organization. You're assessing them to figure out what's important to them. What are they good at? What are their weaknesses? What are they not so good at? Both of these are usually internal right? These are usually external. They're opportunities and threats. What are your opportunities? What, what can they improve on? And then threats. What is the competition doing? You know, is, 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 the, is the industry changing? Are they not keeping up with trends? That's a threat, right? Um, um, Kodak, <laughs> right? Kodak was a, a, was a major brand. And they let Blockbuster, I think he's even better one, Blockbuster, right? Blockbuster, here come, right? Like they came on the scene and they didn't innovate, right? They, the threat was that Netflix came out and started mailing people their DVDs, or, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, they start, and then they just didn't innovate. Netflix yeah. left the DVD mailing behind and they started the streaming. They didn't innovate. Mm -hmm. So that was a threat. They did not, Blockbuster did not properly assess their threat, mm -hmm. the threat of their competition. That's why they're out of business, mm -hmm. right? So you can do a SWOT analysis on your competition. You, can, you need to do a SWOT analysis on your own company. Right, you need to do a SWOT analysis. Um, but if you, but if you are going after a major organization, you have to do a SWOT analysis. You need to understand that organization. Okay, so researching the organization, there are databases that you can literally, you can Google Coca-Cola SWOT analysis. There are also organizations. There are there are services that will do an organ a SWOT analysis for you. It's like nineteen dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No. Yeah, they're SWOT, they do them every year because a SWOT analysis should be updated every year, right? Um, which is what I just put there. Google the company name and SWOT analysis. You'll see all kinds of services that'll come up. You even get a lot of times, you'll get a sample of the SWOT analysis and then they'll say, click here to, to pay, pay $19 for the full report, mm -hmm. right? But you must do that. And, and, and why do you want to invest in that? Because if you are genuinely concerned about their organization because you think you can help them with your product or service, you need to do as well. You need to know about them. You need to know their culture. You need to know what their mission statement is. You need to know how they think about what they think about the environment, what they think about different causes. Because guess what you can do? You can potentially, depending on your product or service, you can speak to that. That's going to demonstrate to them that you've done your research and then guess what you won't be? Just another name on the spreadsheet, right? Cause you, you, that you're gonna, you, I can't tell you how set apart you will be if you do this because they're not used to it. They weren't used to it in the space that I was in and I was in corporate America. They weren't used to it. They were used to salespeople just coming and sit down and just regurgitating all over them not asking questions, not asking how they are, how do they, nothing. You meet someone who is genuinely um, purposeful, right, about the journey and about building the relationship for real, not mm -hmm. just fake, right, not just I'm just here just to get something from you. They, they quickly pick up on that and you quickly become, you go from a, a, a prospective vendor to a trusted advisor because that's eventually what you want to end up being. You can't be a trusted advisor unless you do your work. Let's see. Oh, uh, Maybe I waited too long oh, to switch. No, it's because we went into the 
Oh, well, I went up to the yeah, webinar yeah. thing. Oh, got it. Powerful. Oh, yeah, I see. So okay. So you just click your screen. Uh, like click the screen and then, and then got it. Bingo. Perfect, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Did I go too, too far? Let me make sure. Okay. So, so we saw what a SWOT analysis. So this is kind of, it's just a four, it's a four grid little template, right? And so now for the, for the expert, this is what a template looks like. Okay, it's just, and all you're doing is you're just, you're, you're, you're just writing it in or you're on, it's on your computer, the template is on your computer and you're filling it in as you do your research on that company. You notice a strength, you know, and, and, and you can tie it in, it doesn't have to be very broad, it can be when I was, because I was in learning and development, right, so the company that I work for, we created strategic partnerships um, to, for, for learning and development solutions for these Fortune 500 companies employees. That's, that's what we were doing. That's what I was doing. And so I would always look at it from a standpoint of the, of the service that we were offering. Mm -hmm. So if it, uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, as it related to their employees, mm -hmm. as it related to how they were showing up to the consumer, because guess what, how they're showing up to the consumer has to do with how their employees are reflecting to the consumer. So those are the things that I looked for as I was doing my SWOT analysis when I was in corporate America. And now as I still do SWOT analysis, I look for different things, of course. But so you don't, it doesn't have to be so broad. It can be based on your product or service, um, you know, but definitely these are the four factors that you want to look at. I, anybody have questions so far right now? No questions so far? Okay. So. This is an example of a completed SWOT analysis. Um, I don't know, can you guys, you probably can't see that, but um, just some examples. So the strengths, and I'll read a couple of them. Second most valuable brand in the world, valued at $76 billion. That's a strength, right? Yeah. <laughs> a weakness is investments in research and development are below the industry average. Mm, they getting a little cocky, ain't they? Because if the industry average is a certain amount and they are investing below the industry average, hmm, that's a, that can be a weakness, yes, right? Um, be a weakness that can lead to right. a kind of thing. Mm. That's right. It can lead to, if you're not careful, it can right. lead to that. That's exactly right. Um, um, a strength is diversified income. They've got five different brands. That's a strength. Mm -hmm. A weakness is very low or zero profit margins. How that happen? That means they're huge. They have a lot of employees. They have a lot of. You all know. You all know that Amazon just started turning a profit, right? Yes, but they were reinvesting. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. But but bottom line wise, they just started turning a profit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you know, oh, a weakness. Poor customer service is a weakness. Mm -hmm. But they're but so, so they're really strong. Sounds like on the financial look, competent in mergers and acquisitions. So they acquire well. Right, they're quite well, but they have a high cost structure, a weak brand portfolio. Okay, so let's look at some opportunities. Market growth for the main firm's product. There is market growth. So for the product that they sell, it's a, it's, there's there's tremendous market growth. So more room for them to grow their brand. Growing demand for renewable energy. That's an opportunity. Okay. A threat, the corporate tax structure. This was taken from 2013. Corporate tax stru structure increased from 20 to 22 percent. Uh, another threat, rising pay levels. So this is just, this is a general squad analysis, but this basically is what you would be doing. You're just, as you do your research on these companies, you're just filling these in. Fill each block in with something. You notice something positive, where does it go? Is it a strength or is it an opportunity? Because it's either one, okay? Um, you notice something negative, is it a weakness or is it a threat? Right? So you're, you're, gonna, you're doing your research on that particular organization. And again, all of this is so that you can, um, it gives you topics of conversation. And when you're sitting down with that person, you are sitting down with someone and you are, you are able to demonstrate that you know what you're talking about as it relates to their company, not just coming in regurgitating your company, what you can do. And trust me, you're going to get to your stuff. I and promise. Could it also be used to differentiate yourself in that initial email so that you can 
get a foothold in Absolutely. where you might not have been able to before? Absolutely, because remember last now last Wednesday, I had the same the same thing before advanced prep, and we were talking about emailing, right? Last week, last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So advanced preparation is important anyway, because you're gonna, whether it's an email or whether it's a phone call that you're making, you are going to need to be able to plug something in to that conversation that demonstrates that you know what you're talking about that has to do with that company, that you picked up on something, it, whether it's an article. Remember, I think last Wednesday right. I mentioned, you know, maybe um, the person that you're trying to connect with is, is the VP of, of uh, uh, um, food and beverage. I don't know. VP of food and beverage, and you, you've got some, you, you're, you're now, you've got a sauce. Your company, you, your company sells sauces. And the VP of food and beverage, you're trying to get in. Well, he wrote a blog. He wrote a blog article. You read it, you're gonna mention it. Mm -hmm. Read your blog article, you know, yada, yada, yada. I was very impressed, would love to talk to you about such and such. So that's kind of what we cover. But yes, the exact same kind of preparation, but you would do even more when you know that you're about to sit down with them. Mm -hmm. Because you need, that's a lot of times you only have one shot. You right. need to be able to understand what you're dealing with. Another part of the advanced preparation is earnings calls. How many of you are familiar with earnings? I know you probably are familiar with earnings calls, but how many of you have sat in, or not sat in, but listened in on an earning call or even thought about it? Okay. Yeah, that's another way. I, I That was a, a part of my, um, when I was in corporate America, um, and I had my top clients always listen in on earnings calls because I needed to know, because guess who's on the earnings calls? Investors. Your shareholders, your investors. So they're going to tell the good, the bad, and the ugly. The shareholders <laughs> are going to ask questions. Um, they're going to, you know, the, the, the leadership is going to, 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 to push up their next quarter initiatives. You need to know what the next quarter initiatives are. You should know, because it might be something that relates to what you offer. So you should know what the next quarter. So listening to the earnings calls is uh, it's really, really, uh, you get some really fun nuggets on, on those earnings calls. And it's public. If you're looking to do business with a major corporation, it's public. So you can, um, you can, you can, and you can go to, there's one website called earningscast.com. Lynn mentioned that last, and I didn't have it on the screen. Um, earningscast.com, you can get notified of earnings calls that you're interested in. You can register and it'll, it'll notify you. So um, those companies that you're looking to do business with, your wish list, right? You know that they have um, diversity and procurement initiatives, right? Um, and so it's not that they don't want to do business with you. It's just that the feedback that I've gotten, you know, um, when I first entered this industry, it, it become, became a small business owner and decided to start helping small businesses navigate this whole process. Um, one of the things that I learned by just kind of, uh, I guess, interviewing or connecting with those procurement officers, particularly the procurement officers, is that um, you know, small businesses, we're not showing up prepared. Um, that we are, we're showing up, um, for lack of a better word, half-ass, I can say that. <laughs> Asked. You know, meaning that, um, you know, um, you know, are, you know, you've got a, you're using a Gmail address or, you know, your website isn't up to par, um, you know, things like that. They, they pay attention to that stuff. I've heard it. I, I, when I first launched ARC, it's now four years ago, um, I, of course, did my research and um, ended up somehow connecting with the VP of uh, procurement for the VA in D.C., She's now retired. I'll talk to her every month. I will call her. We became friends. I just, I, call, I found her and I just, I sent her an email because that's what I, I've done. I do that. <laughs> I'll say, I sent a short email. I told her what I was doing and I wanted to talk to her. She emailed me back and said, sure, let's get on the calendar. We got on the calendar and um, um, she told me a lot of stuff. I said, I want to know, I'm, here's what I'm thinking about doing. I'm getting ready to launch a small business to help with you know, this 1% problem that we have, less than 1% of small businesses compete in the federal and corporate marketplace. Um, and um, and I, wanna, I wanna know, is that true? Like what's really going on? 
And what she told me was, yeah, she said that when they get, um, you know, when they send out an RFP, that they're excited when they see a small business respond. Okay, particularly minority small businesses, a woman owned, a veteran owned, really excited. But then she said that it, it turns into disappointment many times because when we start digging deeper, you know, we click the website, it's not up to par. We see the, the, the email address is a Gmail. You know, she said those are things that it demonstrates that they're not really serious. Mm -hmm. So we're not showing up well. And so they can't take a risk on go, you know, or on, on, you know, they had someone delivering and they know they can deliver, even if they're not a hundred percent happy, at least they would deliver. They can't take a chance. They can't take a chance on us. They can't take a chance. Corporate America, same thing. I've had, I had discussions with Coca-Cola. I mean, it's many of them and, and taking a chance on switching up, um, is risky for them. You've got to impress. You've got to impress. And the only way you can impress is to do what nobody else is doing. A lot of these small businesses are not taking the time to do a SWOT analysis. They're not taking the time. They think they can go in there with their charm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not going to work. You've got to do the work. And I know that that's, that's a tough thing. And I will tell you that even when I was in corporate America and I, would, I, I had these, you know, a, a, a list of, of corporations that, you know, we were targeting for these partnerships. Um, the research part, um, sometimes, sometimes it took months, sometimes it took, it took months, you know, because you really want to arm yourself. And when you're trying to get in front of the C-suite, um, or VP level of a particular department, you well, better show up. I mean, you, you will ruin your reputation if you, right. you know, so I would take months sometimes to carefully research the organization and make sure I knew what I was talking about. Um, and so, you know, and I think that because small business owners, we're so busy and we've got a lot of things going on. We don't take the time to do that, but you have to set aside a couple hours a week or something to do it, but don't approach any of these organizations until you're fully ready. Any questions so far? I had a question. So sure. Is there a person you can hire a liaison? I know you're doing this presentation today, but do you help people one on one and, and organizing those things and mm -hmm. doing the final checking the boxes? Mm -hmm. off? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, I, we, we do. I'm moving more in, into that um, because I, I there is a need for it, quite frankly. Um, I, I've had some some small businesses ask if I you know would be like their corporate development person, mm -hmm. and um, I, I can't do that. <laughs> but what I can do is we have a series of workshops and uh, extensions on this, and I'll talk more about that at the end. Um, that I because I love this kind of stuff and it comes natural to me, so I do want to share what's inside of me <laughs> with the small <laughs> business community, and so um, we're we're launching. This is kind of this is kind of the prelude to something bigger. So, and I'll share that for sure. But my, my, you know, I believe in empowering business owners to do it themselves, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. right? I mean, to be able to, you know, because you don't want to just rely on, now, if you are large enough and you can hire, you know, or you've got the cash flow and you can hire a corporate development person, I know a lot of them, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, but if you are able to, to do it yourself, yes. then that's empowering also. And plus, you and you can save your cash flow more. That's a good question. Any other questions so far? No, just one quick comment. You talked about being prepared, and when Charlene talked, she was the winner last year of the Capability Pitch Contest, mm -hmm. and you know she said that I do this for a living. This is what I do: is I teach and train. Mm -hmm. She was like, but I still had to prepare for this. Yes. You know, so don't ever rely on your charming in the price. That's exactly right. They, yeah. they, they, they sure do. I, listen, I've, uh, 23 years I've been high level sales, right? I've never done B to C, mm -hmm. meaning consumer. Mm -hmm. I've always done B to B, B to G, high level sales. Even when I started and when I graduated from college, I was B to B. To B. Um, I, was in, I was dealing more with small and mid-sized businesses, but then as my career grew, I started dealing with major Fortune 500, major Fortune 100 organizations. And I'm gonna tell you, you always, you always, to the day I left that company, I had to be prepared. I had to do my research. I had to, you cannot rest on your laurels to think that, you know, that you can just show up. You just can't do that. You know, um, that's a that's a good point. And good for her for, for bringing that out because right. that's where a lot of times we think that, oh, I'm good, I can just show up. No, you if you haven't done your research and you sit down across, you can, you get one shot at a first impression. 
and that's the truth. And then it's hard to recover from if you can ever recover from it. So, okay. So moving on along. Okay. Um, the first meeting. So we're going to spend some time on this because this is really important. So now that we know and understand that the preparation is so key, right? Um, last week, we went through how to get the meeting, right? Okay, getting the meeting, that's the emails and all that. So if you guys have it recorded, do you send that stuff out? Okay, make we, sure. We have it recorded. We don't send it out automatically, but it is in our Gov training vault. Those so, who are members, they have access. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So you would want to join because I, 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 that's definitely, that's important. Because I did, last last Wednesday was about the, the making the right call, how to how to set up the call and the right email and all that stuff, right? So now you, but you've secured the appointment. And then you circle back and you did even more research to prepare for this appointment. This is major. This is Coca-Cola. What, 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 tell me the name of, show me, tell me who, uh, a company you want to do business with. Well, uh, Ingle Shipbuilding. Ingle Shipbuilding. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. You, how about you? Um, I'm here, I have a different approach because I'm from an MLM, but okay. it, this will be to help me with small business owners as I work with. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. How about you? Um, so colleges like Georgia State University um, okay. or Clayton State University like college. Okay, got it, got it. Are you nervous? Okay, okay. How about you? Uh, FEMA. FEMA. That's a good one. What do you do? Construction equipment and and all kinds of different okay. construction and supplies. Supplies and stuff. stuff. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, but any major corporations outside of FEMA is a governmental agency? No, I mean, most of my target in the private sector is more small, mid-sized okay. um, companies, but uh, there's a, a big one, maybe somebody like a, um, like Arthur Western. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. And, you know, even mid-sized companies, I mean, you know, small companies, you know, that's like 99.5 anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So all company, most companies are considered small businesses. Isn't it crazy? I mean, literally multi-million dollar organization. So just because it's not a Coca-Cola or something like that, don't think that, I mean, all, this applies to any company that you're trying to connect with. Because again, they're making multi, they have a board, they've got a C-suite, they've got the same organizational structure. It may not be as wild as a Coca-Cola or Delta or some other Fortune 500 company, but they have the same kind of organizational structure. So you want to apply this to even those companies. So securing an appointment, with any company, unless it's a mom and pop, and even if it's a mom and pop, blow their mind by mm -hmm. showing up and doing this doing this kind of work. Even if you do it on a smaller scale, because it's gonna show them, wow, that person, they're, show, they're gonna remember you, I promise, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, okay, so you did, these are your dream companies. So you've got this meeting, you're excited. I mean, you, you should be proud of yourself. You secured the meeting, yes. right? Mm -hmm. You got the meeting. So. You've prepared for it. You've done your SWOT analysis. What kind of questions do you, because what do you say in there, right? What do you say? Tell me, somebody just throw something out. You you go in, because we're going to do some little role play too, because I've got some time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do role playing. So tell me, hey. so tell me, tell me, um, okay, we're just going to go around right because we're going to spend some time on this. This is important. So you've got a meeting with your dream company. Um, it is with the, um, let me see who, who uh, tell me your business. I'm a broker of government services. I can do anything. Oh. I, I don't provide, I don't see, that's the thing that I'm, well, while you're briefing yeah. on a product, yeah. I don't necessarily have a product. Oh. You know, I have a, you know, I'm a service disabled veteran and I'm a minority. Okay. So I, what I was looking at was being a broker of services for these companies that do not have certain statuses that want to liaise with me and want to quote unquote partner with me to be able to get the priorities they need in order to gain the contract. Okay, so let me make sure I'm understanding this right. You, your hope is to partner with other service disabled or minority small businesses to be that liaison with the larger agencies and corporations or, or vice versa? No, just, just not service disabled businesses, but people, businesses that are having a hard time breaking into it, they yeah. could, I partner with them, they, we, we have a, a partnership, a partnership mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that they could have that status to be able to Wendy's got it. You know, okay, so you're looking to, for, I want to make sure I've got it right. Mm -hmm. You're looking to do this. You want to um, broker with other small businesses mm -hmm. who qualify 
as a veteran who don't qualify. Who don't don't, qualify. They don't qualify. Yes, qualify. Oh, because you qualify. Yeah. I qualify. Right. So, oh, so to, to partner with this co- these companies who want to get into different governmental agencies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, a company wants to work for FEMA. Uh, FEMA, in, in order for you to work for FEMA, FEMA has a priority that they yep. give service disabled veterans mm-hmm. the first crack at certain contracts. Mm-hmm. So Bill's company doesn't have that mm-hmm. you know, status. Mm-hmm. I would provide my consulting services or my broker service to that company to be able to win that contract. Got it. Are you also then, are you going to be making the, so you partner with Bill. Mm-hmm. And are you going to be representing the company to the agencies? Pretty much. Okay, mm-hmm. which is why this is important because you need to know kind of how to position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need to position agency. the company I'm, I'm, I'm working with, mm-hmm. you know, by doing that research for mm-hmm. them or helping them. Mm-hmm. But I also need to position Prius Enterprises LLC, which yeah. is me, yeah. as a why they should, you know, yeah. take a meeting with me. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, Got it. so there's two two layers. So I mean, I hear people talking about product, product, product. I don't have a product. My product is virtual. My product is me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and what I've learned in the military, you know, the the, the liaising skills that I have, you yeah. know, the the networking skills, mm-hmm. uh, the leadership skills. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's so as I start reading and doing a lot of research on okay, product, product. I'm like, okay, what is, what is, what is my product? Well, you just think your product yeah, is no, you. My product is me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, I mean, service, service. I mean, my yeah, product service. is me, right? Okay, I mean, I that's, it, that's I right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my product, ARC Business Solutions, is I, I'm a service provider. Mm-hmm. So people, they contract me. They purchase me. I don't have a, a, a physical product. Yeah. You know, I, I call them products on my website, but they're services pretty much, mm-hmm. right? So I totally understand that. I'm providing a status, a help with the status. Yeah. You know, for a certain... You know, channel of, of work. Totally get it. I totally mm-hmm. get it now. So for mm-hmm. those organizations who want to break in, they're not service disabled. They're not a minority. Not a, you are. Not they a, can a, partner a, with you. They're not a. They can partner with you and, mm-hmm. and make for some stuff happen. For that specific, happen. you know, bid or a mm-hmm. specific contract, you know, we sign an agreement and say, hey, you know, Free Enterprises LLC is the broker or the project manager yep. or product manager for this mm-hmm. contract. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the subcontractor is Billy Bob's Construction Company. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't have who, them? Who doesn't have got them? Got it. Mm-hmm. Seems like you got a client. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's, I thought there was going to be a thousand people here. No, I'm, just, <laughs> no, no, I'm still at like that. One. I don't need one. Good one. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to spread myself too thin either. You know, having right. too many people doing that, you know, you won't be able to. For sure. I want to have that personal quality. Yeah, I want to be able to still know a person by their name. Mm-hmm. You know, know a, a, a prime contractor by their name and then know me. That's Not right. okay. Who are you? What service are we providing right. for you? That's very bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so got it. And and so um, that makes perfect sense. So so tell me, so you so in my mind, I would say like um, a company like um, I'm gonna well, you know, there there are many, there are many companies that are multi million dollar companies, right? Who don't have the staff that you know they can they they can't break in or haven't broken or haven't been successful, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I'm gonna call, I'm gonna say that one of them might be um, uh, what major company I can say? Which is ABC, ABC company. Yeah, ABC, ABC company. <laughs> you're you you now are sitting down in front of um the, the product the company that you partner with mm-hmm. is a container company, mm-hmm. right? Um, what you're sitting down in front of the um the VP of um uh, building services. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. What are what are what would you say? How 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 do you start that meeting? Out? Tell me. I would say because uh, obviously they have to do a little bit of their research on who I am yes. too. You know, it's not mm-hmm. they're not going to go blind. They're going to have you know their their execs say, hey, you know what? Give me you know do a Google search on this guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say, you know what what led you, what 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 attracted you from what I brought to the table? You know, what are the, some of the things that stood out when you were doing research on my company that that you had questions on or that mm-hmm. Or that allowed, or that gave me the green light to be able to meet you. Because okay. you know, there has to be something. You know, just like you want to meet with that person, there has to be something that you really, you know, hit the nerve on yeah, that you want to know. Right. I need to see. I need the the reciprocity on that. Yeah. You know, are you just meeting with me because you know you have, you know, 40 minutes on your calendar and you didn't have anything to fill out? Or mm-hmm. what really attracted you to my company? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, other than the product and service that I. Have. Out. Yeah. Because anybody could give them a product or service. Right. That's exactly. So how would you sell yourself to that other person? 
but let's back up. Is that what, let's make sure, this is the first meeting, mm-hmm. right? right? We're talking about the first couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So your very first question would be, you would want to know, you, what, what attracted you to us? What caused you to agree to give you the green? You know, what attracted you, hey, listen, I understand you're busy, but, you know, what attracted you to us? You know, it's not just yes and no questions. Hey, what attracted you to us? You know, what what really stood out, you know, when you were doing research on me, you know, that allowed that allowed me to get on your calendar. Yeah. He's like, well, you know, he could probably say, he or she could probably say, hey, you know what, I really like your background, you know, I like your mission statement, or I like, you know, the stuff that you've done in the past, okay. or you know what, I just want to get, or maybe it's just, you know what, I want to give somebody an opportunity that probably never had it. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be any one of those things, mm-hmm. and that way, that way I know what approach. Right. I used yeah, to work totally. intelligence with military. I'm okay, sorry. got it, got it, got it. You know, so right, right, body right. And so he's people. reading body cues. Yeah, he's I'm, like, I'm doing, I'm, doing, I'm, doing, I'm doing, I'm doing yeah. it. You know, search. I'm just trying to see what is, what is it that we have in common. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to research the CEO of wherever I'm going to meet. Okay, he likes golf. Mm-hmm. Perfect conversation. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm a twelve, I'm a twelve handicapper too. Yeah. I mean, he might like cars. Okay. You know, I have to find mm-hmm. something so that's going to get that instead of that, you know, that wall that I'm going to see. So that's the first, you know, thirty seconds. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. How about you? What's your name? Demiley. Demiley. Okay. Tell me. So, um, hmm. okay. I, I guess I would do it like I do an interview. Um, first couple of questions. First, first, couple first, first thirty first, seconds. How would you break okay. ice? What do you? So, um, good afternoon. I want to thank you for your time today, mm-hmm. um, for having me, and I'm really excited to know about the. Um, well, I'm going to say for the job right now because I couldn't think off the top of my head for my business. I'm really excited to know about the role you all are hiring for. So if you can just tell me a little bit more um, about your role here and about the role that you're hiring for. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's good. Who else wants to go? You want to you wanna give this to the staff? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, if it were me. <laughs> Did you say you're passing? I'm learning. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm learning. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, uh, well, you know, thanks so much for the meeting today. Um, I just want to tell you, you know, I've, I've done some research on your organization, and I really appreciate the way that you serve the blah, blah, blah community. And, you know, the reason why I was really interested in talking to you is because of the need that I saw when I was doing research. And, you know, I think mm-hmm. we've got a perfect solution that can help you fix that. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think uh, one way that I look at it would say, Kind of, as everybody else was alluded to to begin with, is you know, thank you for the time. Um, you know, done some background, understand a little bit more about Archer Western and familiar with the work. Have done some work in other roles with with your company before. Mm-hmm. In order to kind of guide what I may be able to help you with, and so that way I'm not totally going off of assumptions. Mm-hmm. Can you maybe share with me one or two pain points that you mm-hmm. guys feel around how you guys handle? your construction equipment right now on mm-hmm. sites and ways that you think that you make, you know, improvements you're looking for. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah, yes, pain pain points. Points. Definitely pain points. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, I teach financial literacy. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times it depends on what is an individual, a large group or business owner. Mm-hmm. It, it does vary. Yeah. Um, a lot of times if I'm sitting down with an individual, I may ask them, you know, saying, Greetings and things like that. Um, um, you know, based on your finance, you based on your knowledge of how money works. Um, is there any things that have kept you up at night, or any anxieties that you may be facing over money mm-hmm. that you feel like that? You know, a little bit more knowledge would um, be beneficial to you. So it, it could vary for many ways. If I'm dealing with a business owner, a lot of times I may talk to them about. Um, you know, are you aware that there are some really tremendous tax breaks for you Mm -hmm. individually as a business owner and also as an employer Mm -hmm. um, that you can benefit to save a lot on taxes, especially with these new laws, Mm -hmm. and to be able to have some significant um, benefits from that um, to minimize their tax uh, brackets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, various different things that are in our office from a larger platform, long-term care and different things, investments. Okay. So just kind of a lead in to kind of see how, but I agree. I think it's important to do the research and I also do a little bit on the individual, mm-hmm. but just asking up front, you know, married mm-hmm. kids, mm-hmm. where they just, because I got mm-hmm. a lot of ideas, even from the 
cradle to the grave. So got those it. things are important to do up front. Got it, got it, got it. One of the things that I like about what everyone said is that um, I heard open-ended questions. That's really, really important, okay? Um, don't, you know, try not to ask yes or no questions if possible. Um, one of the things I do want to challenge you on, though, when you are meeting with that person for the first time, is don't forget the person that you're meeting with is a person. Mm -hmm. is, a human, is, a, is a person with their own goals, with their own vision for their department, right, that they're over. So I, here's where I would challenge you. Um, be sure that you bring them in, show interest in who they are as an individual in helping them move their goals along because you're looking to partner with them. If they're your first meeting, hopefully it's it's a higher up. We talked about this last week where I mentioned, I don't meet, I never, when I was in corporate America, I didn't meet with like lower level managers and stuff like that. I just didn't do that because it's time wasting to me. I spent more time getting in, trying to get in front of the VP and up, right? Um, be, because those are the ones that really can make the decisions. A lot of times you're meeting with the manager or director and they, you know, you, you sold them, but now they got to turn around and sell their higher mm -hmm. up. And so I never did that. Um, and, but so when you're in front of that, that VP, right? Because what I want to challenge you to do is get in front of the highest up you can. Don't be scared. <laughs> okay. Don't be scared. You, feel you, the fear and do it yep, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Build your courage. If you're okay. showing up, if you're showing up well, yes. then you you can you can do this. If you're showing up well, right? Okay. So so make sure that you are showing okay. up well. That's okay. And I want to take a couple pictures. Right okay. And I did too. Okay. I see people got questions on here, so I'm trying to see online. Okay. Um. Yeah. So make sure that you show. So make sure you show up well. So. Here's, here's, here's a, a nugget that I'm going to tell you that um, when I when I work with these major corporations, I had real relationships with these people. Like, I really did. Like, we became very friendly. I wouldn't say friends because, you know, you don't use that word. But we became very friendly. There was one client that I had, uh, IHG, Intercontinental Hotels Group, um, is the brand for Intercontinental Hotels, Holiday Inn. Crown Plaza, that was my client, mm -hmm. right? They're over at Ravinia. Mm -hmm. They thought I worked there. Mm -hmm. Hey, Amy, they, I went one time. I, I had a, they had a, a HR, they had an HR um, uh, uh, tra training session. They had two, one in Austin, Texas, and one in uh, Los Angeles. And they invited me out. I was with the other employees, the other VPs and stuff, and we were on the the, the shuttle to get to the hotel. And they were talking to me like I work like I work for an IHG. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, oh, well, you're there so much because I became the, a part of the fabric of their organization. That's how much I knew. I knew a lot of the head of the, the heads of from food and be beverage to to site design to IT to learning. I started in HR and learning and development because that was, you know, where I started because of what I was representing. But I I learned and I I took. Um, I, I, I was able to actually build relationships with other department heads, right? So they thought I worked for IHG, which was hilarious. And so that's how friendly. <laughs> so what I, what I want to challenge you to do is build real authentic relationships. You can't do that if you don't take the time to ask the person that you're meeting with, how are they? Yes. How did they, how did they, what does that say? Tell me about you and your role with the company. Um, tell me about some of your goals for the department. That's you showing that you are, thank you so much. That's you showing that you are interested in them, mm -hmm. that you're interested in helping them because guess what? They look good. They have goals mm -hmm. for that department. If they met you and you kind of hit on it because you said, what made you want to meet with me? But I'm going to challenge you a little bit. That sounds a little self-serving. I get what you're saying though, and you'll get to it if you ask the right questions. You don't have to ask it that way. Maybe it's my right? Spanish language. I it's okay. That's fine. <laughs> no, no, no. If we're all learning, I get it. You you want to and, and you do want to know that by the way. It's just the way that you ask that question. If you ask the right questions, you'll find out, right? Yeah. So if you ask them to tell me about some of your goals for your department, what are some of your challenges? What I'm giving you some of the some of the so you you sit down. 
small chatter for like 10 seconds. Because remember, these are high level people. They don't have time, right? But you don't want to just jump right in. So a little small chatter, you know, something, I don't know. Oh, it's terrible weather. I don't know. Or you see a picture on the wall. But don't be too corny, though. Like, try to be genuine is what I'm saying because they pick up on this stuff, right? And you, and believe me, they pick up on it. So, um, but when you get into the meat of it, so tell me, tell, so, so John, tell me, tell me about you. How long have you been with the company? Tell me about yourself. How, tell me about your role with the company and, and what are some of your goals that you want to accomplish? People love to talk about themselves, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And they love to talk about what their goals are and what they, you can be, let me tell you something. I used to be a writing machine. They would just, you ask the right questions, you just write, and write. you learn a lot just asking mm -hmm. about them and what their goals are, right? So again, I'm trying to, trying to get you to, to, um, to not think so much about what you can do for them or what attracted them to you. You're going to get all of that, I promise, if you ask the right questions about them, right? So that's the very, that's, that is, um, that's, that's something that has helped me in my career all my life. I don't know if I want to say, all my, I feel like I've been in sales and development all my life, but you know what I mean? Since, since I started in, in working, really, you know what I mean? Especially when I started high level sales stuff. So, um, okay. So part of what I'm talking about has to do with active listening, right? Because, and I'm going to tell you something now, this is a skill that you, it's a skill. Like you really need to, um, you really need to practice it. It's hard. I, I'm a talker. I love to talk. <laughs> I do. I love, I love to talk. I love to share. I love to teach. I love all that stuff. But guess what? If I am not an active listener, if I'm not really listening and paying attention, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be a great teacher. I'm not going to be able to give you the right information. And boy, did I have, I had to learn the hard way. It's like, it took me a really, really long time to understand, to shut my mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? And ask the right questions and just be able to really actively listening without thinking too far ahead of them. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, that's a good one. You're thinking so far ahead of them, you're thinking about your responses. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, we just all do that. I, you know, even in our personal relationships, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you're taking notes, the person is talking, y'all in an argument, you're taking, you know, I have, let me tell you, I have pulled my phone out in an argument and take this, um, then they, they telling me how they feel and I'm taking notes because I got to be able to respond back and I don't want to forget what they said. Awful. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I've done that before. I love it. I've done that before because I don't want to forget what they said because I got to circle back because I'm thinking about what I'm going to tell you after you tell me what you said to me. That's so crazy. But that's what we do. And so you don't want to, you don't want to do that. So it really is a skill. You've got to learn how to actively listen. And part of that is asking the right questions, of course. So I just gave you, so one thing that you guys all did, nobody asked a yes or no question. Perfect. You all ask open-ended questions. So the only other thing I would say is I challenge you on um, make sure that the questions, especially your, your first couple of questions, ask them about them and their goals and stuff, right? And then the, for the rest, you're going to practice, practice active listening skills. Number one, you being attentive. You are asking open-ended questions, right? You are asking probing questions because probing questions is going to get you, they're going to tell you how you can help them because guess what? If they're meeting with you, I, I'm going to tell you something. I never had a meeting with a client, a potential client that didn't become a client ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the truth. I promise. Never. Because they already know you can only blow it. <laughs> That's the, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. They're not meeting with you. If, 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 if so, how, how many of you have heard of with them? Yeah. What's in it for me? Everybody has a with them. Mm -hmm. They have a with them. Everybody does. So if you're sitting there taking up space and their time on their calendar, there's something in it for them. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to uncover mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and up to you to blow it. And especially if you're going all the way to the top. So, yeah, so that's 
you have really good strategy too about going to the top. Yeah. Like you said, they don't they're, they're not what, so you will get, and I will tell you this, the strategy, so, so, you know, in sales, you know, it's about numbers, right? It's numbers, numbers, numbers. I was never the numbers, like I was a revenue girl. Like I, numbers, how many calls did you make? How many emails did you send out? How many appointments did you have? I, I, I had, I had, I had the fewest appointments. I had the, I made the fewest calls because I, it was intentional for me. I did not waste my time. I'm not going on appointments just to say I had ten appointments this week. And then no, no substance. And no that's substance. right. You I'm not doing three it. And closing instead of ten. Bingo, Amy all day long. That's all. That's all. That's me. <laughs> like I don't, I don't go and make appointments with people. Like I'm not meeting with a manager or a supervisor. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. You know. Um, and so. But I would spend some time on the phone with the manager or supervisor to kind of, you know, do a little research or whatever, yeah, recon. Tell, they tell you they tell. the pain points exactly. of their supervisor. Part of my research, yeah. part of the research. Remember, the advanced research. prep. So part of my advanced prep might be to connect with the supervisor or, uh, or even uh, 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 just a, a frontline salesperson or a person, right? Mm -hmm. That's a part of the advanced prep phase. But when it came to the meeting, I didn't meet with people just to be meeting with people. I just didn't do that. So, so, so I never, I never had a meeting that they did not become my client ever. And so that, that is, that's the reason why I want you to understand how important, that's why I know how important a meeting is. It's, it's, it's already big that that person is meeting with you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times we, our mind says that we need to go beyond, we need to force ourselves during the meeting when mm -hmm. we're already meeting you know mm -hmm. that's a big step i mean mm -hmm. i guess a meeting and opening calendar is about like you said you can only blow it that's right you know mm -hmm. what you're doing there as a meeting is validating something that they might they already know mm -hmm. you know so they might already know and they might have some questions that you need to clarify for yeah. right. so that that's that's where a lot of times we, we blow it that's right mm -hmm. we do we blow it ourselves mm -hmm. yeah. right and another thing that we do is we we get a little impatient maybe because I've had, I mean, I've had some clients, I told a story about Delta and how fast I won Delta, right? That was last Wednesday. Oh, I've got some stories where it took me a year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like literally, like I, from the first meeting, mm -hmm. like I'm meeting after meeting, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they still became my client. Mm -hmm. It just took a little longer. It was more relationship building. Mm -hmm. They were maybe feeling, spending more time feeling me out. Maybe there was a budget issue. Maybe, you know, or maybe they had some turnover. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why, you know, they don't move as quickly when you have that first meeting, right? Mm -hmm. All kinds of reasons why, but you keep, but, and I'm going to get to this part, the next step, you're responsible for that too. Yes. yes. Exactly. You're responsible oh, for that that's too. That's important part. You're responsible, that's right. You're responsible for the whole thing. You walk out of that office and you don't have a next step set up. I'm going to talk about that. You blew it. Mm -hmm. You know how long it took you to get that appointment? Are you yes. crazy? <laughs> Not to get on their calendar again, yeah, you know? Right. So, so that is that's that is really really important. So, um, I just I went off on a tangent, but asking the probing uh, questions is really important. Um, requesting clarification. Okay, there are some techniques in this, and we I go into more. I can't go into every single thing because there's even a little prelude even before this meeting that um, my workshop. Is gonna is gonna cover because it's it's too much. Like really, when you talk about the the anatomy of a great sales meeting or whatever, there are some components in there that I can't touch on all at one time today. Um, requesting clarification. Um, there are some things that you can do before the meeting, but as far as like in the meeting, you're asking questions. You gotta ask for clarification. So what I'm hearing you say is. Mm -hmm. X, Y, Z, because what are you doing the whole time? Don't forget, you're going to ask, and we covered this. Don't forget, you're going to ask them, is, is it okay if I take some notes? Oh, yeah. Right? So there's, you know, but, you know, so you're writing. They're talking, you're writing. And I think my experience is as long as you, you let them know what you're doing, hey, I'm going to take some notes. Um, is it okay if I take some notes? I'm going to ask you some questions, take some notes. Sure. Um, you're writing, and if there's something that you're unclear on, then just ask what I'm what I'm hearing you saying, or help me understand that. You know, and so that's requesting cl uh, clarification. Paraphrasing is kind of similar. You're kind of regurgitating back to them what you what they said to you, right? Be attuned to or reflect feelings, right? That's just body language, right? I mean, you 
you know when you're talking to somebody, whether they're super high energy, whether they're not, sometimes it's hard to turn off. Sometimes you meet with somebody, they're not as high energy. You, if you're high energy, then be high. Listen, I'm high energy. I haven't had any coffee this morning. No. <laughs> I haven't had any. I, I, and I, I, I'm serious. I'm caffeine intolerant. I, so um, I can't have coffee, but I'm high energy. And I've had, I've met with people and, you know, it's like, God, are you alive? Jesus. You know? What you saying? God, it's like, but people Some have stone face. They're absorbing it. And they're the ones who are ready to push the trigger because they're watching you move through the process. And then at the end of it, if they're impressed, they're ready to go. You got it. So you yeah. can't read them. You sometimes. sure can't. Sometimes you can't. That's my. That's exactly my lesson. You sometimes just don't know. If they're stone faced, you don't know. Be you. Because one of the biggest things that I, 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 I got back um, from my journey in corporate America, especially like the last two years, I, because I knew I was going to be leaving. I knew I was leaving. And I, cause I wasn't going to stay and continue to make millions for major corporations. I just yeah, make it for yourself. Right. I mean, I made like nine million. I didn't, I didn't make that. I did well, but it was $9 million in two years, you know? And so I was like, uh, and I knew like, it really became clear to me. These people, they, they like me. Yeah. They like the product or the service. They, right. yes. But it's my relationship that they just yeah, love, right? right? Cause right. I'm the one who built it. I'm the Absolutely. one who cultivated that relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So right. I started, so I, so towards the last two years before I, before I left corporate America, I, um, I started asking questions to my clients. Mm -hmm. I, and, and, and basically questions to help me understand more because we had become friends by then, right? Or friendly mm -hmm. enough, right? We would have sometimes lunch, I'd buy different things like that. And you know, and one of the one of the feedbacks that I got that I want you to make sure that you 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 understand is that the main thing that they said was you were just genuine. You were just genuine. I didn't feel like I was being sold. That's right. Who wants to feel like they're being no. sold? Right. right. So the whole purpose of of meeting with them is to give them a different experience. Right. And so part of that is being attuned to and reflecting feelings. So so, you know, um, just pay attention. You know, you may not always um, have to say anything. You know, sometimes your body language might shift a little bit. You know, sometimes, I mean, I've been in meetings with people um, and, you know, I've said, is everything okay today? How are, you, uh, how are you today? You seem a little disconnected. Are you okay? Now, I may not have asked. I wouldn't ask that on the first appointment, of course. Mm -hmm. But, you know, follow up. I, I, I know them now. I've had mm -hmm. a few meetings with them. And something's a little off with them. Mm -hmm. I ask. I said, how, how are you? You seem, you seem a little disconnected. Is everything okay with you? You'd be surprised. People don't ask them questions, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, just basically treating them like they're just an end to a me, a, a end to a means or something like that. That's not that's not cool. Um, so um, be attuned to and reflect feelings, and also for yourself, right? Don't be so. One of the things when I when I got into corporate America, I was very starchy. Well, I, I still can be a little bit starchy. I was I was just too too, too professional. Oh, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, like right. like too you know yeah. Yeah, I get accused of that sometimes now, like in my personal life, like, oh, you turn off your business hat. I'm like, this is who I am. But, <laughs> but, but, but when I first started my, in my sales journey, I was almost, um, I wouldn't say robotic, but I was too, not too poly. Yeah, I was just this, you know what I mean? And I, you know, and, and I, and I did not let my personality shine. Um, and, and so be who you are. You know, but be genuine. Just be genuine, because they pick right. up on it. So feedback that I that I received, you know, when I would ask, you know, is, you know, you you you're just real. You just real. You just, you know, you never made me feel like I was being sold. You never, mm -hmm. you know, genuine. Hence them thinking that I work for the company or whatever. Like <laughs> I, that's how it works. Um, and then of course summarizing. Okay, so make sure, like, after you take all of your notes, and again, there's more to this, but after you take all of your notes and, and everything, you're going to summarize, you know, um, it, and you've done it a little bit anyway when you paraphrase back maybe for a particular question, but, you know, what is the overarching um, theme of what they told you today? That's, so just kind of summarize it. Um, 
And then, okay, but no, I think I'm gonna stop here for a minute. I think what I want us to do is, <laughs> I want us to role play. <laughs> I want one person, I want one person to be the VP of some. You guys can figure it out. And I want the other person to be the, the, the salesperson or the business owner or whatever. And then we're gonna switch out anyway. So it doesn't matter, whoever goes first, so you all, how do you want to team up? I say make it easy. Me and Pam can't be together because she can read my mind. Yep, yeah, no, you can't, <laughs> right? Okay, then how about we do this? How about you two together? Okay. You two are together, yeah. and then you two yeah. are together. Okay. 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 What are we doing? You are, you're conducting your first meeting. Okay. You are, you know, first, you you, you guys need to decide who's first, who's the, who's who the. First? Yeah. Okay. okay, so who's going to go first? So it's a business owner and the rep. I noticed that you, you have not marketed uh, as yeah. much to the you don't do any exports. And what I was thinking is that through my knowledge of the, you know, the Latin culture and the Hispanic culture, and the billions of dollars that they're going to spend on the products in the future, you would be able to uh, get that, uh, that, that link up. Somebody right. internal that's so working with you got some involvement would, would be able to tap into my aspect, but also my company is not getting it. You could redirect some of your efforts and make sure that you're Yeah, sure. I think the best thing about the role is that you can I'm just saying about the Hispanic population and what they're dividing on. We're going to do two more minutes and then we're going to switch. This is all in front of the country. As I get ready to do the government, I'm going to say that. So, uh, um, so the next step, like you said, you want me to make sure that I 
has been built in the tree. I'll also add how my company can advance that, the product that you're on. And that, that's all I do. I just remember reading the solicitation about that in the next uh, Let's switch up. We'd like to move out. Let's switch. Uh, already? Oh. Yeah, already. Oh, already. Oh, already. Oh, already. Oh, already. Oh, already. Because you're going to save three thousand dollars and have that on your project. I don't have the overhead. So I, did, I don't have to pay the taxes, the building, the rent, and everything. We're like cutting out the, the overhead or middleman. So, so if I want a Mercedes 55, a whatever, I buy it. You get it so much. Yeah, the way I learned, let you talk. Yeah. 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 Yeah
unless it's something they ask you to send in advance, right? Don't send your goodies ahead of time. Don't send your goodies ahead of time, okay? So that's, that's but but you take the lead in, in, in every way too, in them being accountable to their own goals and them and getting the appointment on the next calendar but ask permission first. Don't just assume because then that comes off as you being pushed your copy. The way you're gonna, the way you're gonna, you, you're gonna reflect that is just what I said. We've got some aggressive goals, and um, I know we both, we're both busy. I know you're really busy with a lot of different projects. I've got a lot going on, um, but I want to make sure that we we meet our goals. Is it okay if I if I if I continue to follow up with you to remind you, I want to be the accountability partner in this relationship. Is that okay? And 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 they will, listen, they appreciate it. They, they appreciate you asking. They appreciate you recognizing the fact that they need it. And then they also appreciate you taking the lead because they've been taking the lead. They take the lead all the time. And they need somebody else to take the lead. And you that's how you begin to position yourself as their trusted advisor by doing those things. Does that help? Yeah. It helps. And I, I will just say, you know, the partnership that Amy and GCA have together, that, that I mean, that's exactly how it was formed. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate the fact that every time we had an appointment, you did have those clear goals for each meeting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, prior to the appointment coming in, Richard's in my office, what are we talking about with Amy today? And I'm yeah. like, it's, on it's on there. She already so designed we it. To, we had to get yeah. our stuff together so that we get the, yeah, that, yeah. that certainly works and make yeah. sure it keeps them accountable to moving the mission forward. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I practice, I promise you, I'm not telling you something that I haven't done and I still do. And it, it, it's, it works. I promise it works. If you, if you initiate this stuff, it works. I promise. Promise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So someone had asked if there is more. There's more. Um, this is again like a little prelude to a workshop that I have coming up. I'm just now starting this workshop for small businesses. I'm so excited about it because I didn't know I'd be doing this. Like I, I, I really this sales stuff or whatever, you know. But what I've realized is that small businesses need this. Mm -hmm. Like you guys, yeah. you need this, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so um, it's it's a online, it's live and online. It's like a webinar. Um, and there may be opportunities for it to be on site as well. But for right now, we're doing the very first one. I think it's like ninety nine dollars, ninety seven dollars. But you get twenty dollars off. Um, with code GCA if you register through the 15th, through June 15th. So if you're early bird register, then you get $20 off, but use that code GCA. Um, and it's, it's a three hour workshop. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've got a lot to share. Like there's more to this. Um, and I think that there's just gonna be in layers, I, you know, because it's, it's a lot when it comes to the sales stuff. This is not something that is, um, it is an acquired skill that takes some time, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to like bombard you guys with a bunch of stuff. Like last week it was the email and the call. This week is the actual meeting. There is even more nuances and tools and things in between all of that that I haven't covered yet that I want to cover. Um, so if you want to take advantage of that, I would love to have you um, participate in it. Um, and then that's my contact information, ARC Business Solutions. You can follow us on uh, social media, our phone number, um, email address and all that good stuff. Any other questions or anything for me? No, keep that up so we can get. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so you, oh, no. Uh, you said, I think I might have missed what you said just here on the last couple of sentences. You said, don't send your goodies ahead of time or your, mm -hmm. your delivery. Right, right. So, so if there's something that you're supposed to be getting to them and you could email it to them, you could. Oh. Right, and you can really email it to them in advance of the meeting. Don't. That's your reason to get back in front of them. That's your goodies that I'm talking about. So leverage, you know, when you're setting that next meeting, leverage your deliverable back to them. And then also you're holding them accountable to their deliverable to you. And hopefully they do have something they need to get back to you. Even if it's, um, um, uh, I don't know, um, even if it's just you know some uh, some other initiative or maybe somebody they want to bring to the table, a lot of times they'll do that. They'll want to bring somebody else to the table. But don't give up your goodies before that meeting. Save your goodies for the next meeting. Okay. Any other questions for me? 
Was this beneficial? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So we thank you, Miss Amy. Okay. Dr. Daisy and Faye, you all didn't have any questions online, right? I don't see any questions, so I'm going to take that that you don't have anything. Uh, yeah. So next week, I just want to Oh, the best time. Yeah, next week. Yeah, I want to make sure everyone in the class knows. Okay. That's okay. I want to make sure everyone knows about what's coming up next week. Thank you, Amy, for doing your series of classes with us. Next week's two, the next two weeks classes are going to be taught by the founder, Abraham Young. And you want to be here for next week's class, June 19th, where he's going to talk about how your company can get free biz, free equipment for your business. That's furniture, free furniture, oh. and free computers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. I said, Abe, you've been holding out on the information. Oh, 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 I've never heard this. But that's, that's Abe for you. He comes up with surprises. So you definitely <laughs> want to register for that class. That's next Wednesday. And then the class after that is about FAR regulations. Every government contractor needs to know about the FAR. And he's doing a one-day class from 1030 to 12. Um, that's June 26th about things you need to know that it relates to the federal uh, acquisition regulation. And that's the Bible of government contracting. Small business owners, we get into what we're doing and we don't know the rules and the laws behind what we're doing. So he's going to be teaching that next week. So like I said, not next week, that's June 26th. So June 19th, free equipment, free laptops, how your business can qualify to get it. And then June 26th, that's the... uh, the FAR regulation classes. So that's the month of June. And then we're moving into the heavy hitters, bit spenders. So don't forget, if you're ready to sign up for that, see us so we can go ahead and get you uh, scheduled and prepared mentally for this competition. All right? I don't see any questions online. Thank you all for coming out. And uh, see you all next week. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay, so I know you are interested in that. Um, that registration will be available by... Today, like later today. Yeah. Yeah. So, so definitely get signed in. Absolutely.